According to classical physics, a moving charged particle emits electromagnetic waves. In a quantum mechanics picture, when a charged particle moves inside a polarizable medium with molecules, it excites the molecules to, to the higher level and excited state. Okay. Upon returning back to the, to, to the ground state, the molecules we emit some photons in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And according to Shujin's principles, the emitted waves move out spherically at the same velocity of the medium. If the, if the particle motion is slow, the group of radiative waves gather up slightly in the direction of the motion, but they do not cross. However, if the particle moves faster than the speed of light, the emitted waves add up constructively, leading to a coherent radiation at angle theta with respect to our particle direction. This is known as the Kirenkov radiation. As you know, the electromagnetic radiation refers to the waves of electromagnetic fields, propagating through the space carrying radiant energy, including radio waves, microwaves, infrared ray waves, visible light, X-ray, and gamma radiation. Chodenkov radiation is a type of electromagnetic radiation which is observed when a charged particle moves with a faster speed than the speed of light in that medium in which charged particle is moving. Speed of the particle should be faster than the phase velocity of light instead of overall velocity. The first person to ask what would happen if a charged particle reached a speed faster than lights in a given medium was Oliver Heaviside, an English engineer who in 1893 in his book of electromagnetic theory writes two pages about this phenomenon. According to Heaviside's book, several physicists of the day, including future Nobel Prize winner J.J. Thompson, had apparently concluded that it would be impossible for a charged object to move faster than light because they would carry an infinite amount of electrical energy. Because of that, Oliver wrote in his book, Do Not Be Afraid of Infinity. A couple of years later, there's evidence found in Eva Curie's biography of her mother. Marie Curie, in the first years of the 20th century, was working with a bluish glow seen in dark glass vessels containing salts or radium. But Marie Curie didn't make any research about this phenomenon. The first steps of the experimental procedure that lead into the conclusion of the existence of the Cherenkov radiation was made by Pavel Cherenkov during his stay in Leningrad on 1933. Under the direction of Sergei Ivanovsky Vavilov, the father of the nonlinear optics. The initial purpose of the experiment was to analyze the fluorescent emission in uranium salt solutions. Polyvo proposed to irradiate various solutions with, with, with gamma rays. And the first encounter of Cherenkov and his solution was when he observed blue light emitted from a vessel containing sulfuric acid, which is a solvent for uranium salts. Furthermore, in, in 1936, Cherenkov made another discovery. When observing the polarization of blue light, he found that the radiation was emitted asymmetrically and forward from the gamma ray. By using Eugene's principle, it's possible to calculate the angle of the blue light emitted. This is a similar effect of the Doppler effect. Volibov also suggested that this radiation could be a consequence of the Campton effect, by electrons being turned out by the gamma rays and then low time by the medium. Later, it was suggested that this acceleration of the electrons was caused by a dipole radiation, which was created by the atoms in themselves. As how Pablo suggested, the Cherenkov radiation is a consequence of the Kampton effect, and is when you knock out an electron at a very high speed. This electron can be knocked out with a particle or with a photon. So this can have a very nice application, such as neutron detection. One of, the, one of these detectors is the super Kamiokande neutron detector, which is located in Japan. So this detector consists of, of a system with a very high tech located underground. So no other radiation can interact with the water that's inside. So also you have a very huge amount of water, heavy water, which is also known as deuterium, surrounded by photo detectors. So when the so when a neutrino collide with an electron, this electron is knocked out at a very high speed, which is the, which this speed is greater than light in this medium. 
So this, this, this selection interacts with the, with the medium. The medium is slowing down the election. This produces the shock wave and also produces, this shock wave produces the blue light of the, of the circuit of radiation. Then this blue light is de detected by the photo detector which then can then be imaged with a, with a, with a very high tech computer and we can locate where the election was interacted with the election. A common analogy is the sonic boom of a supersonic aircraft or bullet. The sound waves generated by the supersonic body propagate at the speed of, of sound itself. As such, the waves travel slower than the speeding object and cannot propagate forward from the body, instead forming a shock front. In a similar way, a charged particle can generate a light shock wave and it travels through the insulator. They show that charge traveling faster than the speed of light in a substance with a frequency independent reflexive index n emit radiating displaying a shock wave singularity at the surface of the cone defined by this equation, where theta is the angle between the direction of motion and of the electromagnetic wave front. C is the speed of light in vacuum and V the speed of the particle. So this is a fractal equation. This, this equation describes the, the total energy of the chemical radiation. This, is a, this interval is done over the frequencies for which particle speed is greater for the speed of light in that medium. Uh, Frank Chan and Chen Ko got the Nobel Prize in 1958 for this equation, and this internal converged in, in this limit. So we want to know how it works the, the Chen and Ko effect. So we have a particle that needs charge, and this is speeding greater than the speed of light. So the speed of the particle is more than the speed of light in that medium. So imagine the shock wave just like the Doppler effect. So we have our reference and the shock wave is like this. And this is the shock wave. So in this reference uh, mode, we have an, an a, a 90 degree angle and this is the theta of, of the shock wave. So the equations will be over uh, sine of, sine of the theta equals the V of light, the velocity of light over the velocity of the particle. So in, in given angle uh, we we can know the, the velocity of the particle. So imagine that, that we have a high energy charged particle moving through the, the medium of the water. So the, the particle is obviously uh, greater than the speed of light in that medium. So uh, we want to know what, what is the velocity of the particle uh, in, in that medium. So we have that, that the speed of light on water equal to 2.25 times 10 to the, to the 8 meters meters per second. So uh, we know the, that this angle is 53. So uh, we can calculate the, the, the speed of light of the particle and it's, so we have uh, sun of the light over sun theta equals the velocity of the particle. So, uh, putting that together, it will be 2.25 times 10, times 10 to the 8 meters per second over sine of theta. With this, we can, we can say that the velocity of the particle equals to 2.82 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Our next example. We have an electron, an electron traveling through water at 10% the speed of light in that medium. The speed of light in water is the speed of light divided by 1.3 degree. 
and so we, we want to calculate its, its total energy first. To do its total energy, we need to check the factor gamma. The factor gamma equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus the speed of the, of the electron squared over the speed of light in a vacuum squared. It's not the speed of light in a minimum, it's the speed of light in a vacuum. So, so we have 1 over the square root of 1 minus 1.1 c over 1.33 squared over c squared. And this equals 1.779. And then we use our, since it's a moving particle at relativistic speeds, to calculate its total energy, we multiply gamma factor times the mass times c squared. And this equals, the gamma factor we already have it, it's 1.779, and c squared times the mass of an electron is 0 0.511. Mega electron volts. The result of this factor is 0 0.909 mega electron volts, and that's the total energy of the moving electron. The next thing we, we, we want to get is its kinetic energy, which equals the, the, the total energy times the rest energy. Minus, I'm sorry, minus the rest energy. So the total energy is what we have here, 2.909 mega volts, and uh, the rest energy is the, um, the factor we have calculated before, that is 0.511 mega volts. This gives us a kinetic energy of 0.398 mega electron volts. Next thing we want to get is the momentum. This is equal to the square root of the total energy squared minus the rest energy squared. These are all factors that we already have. Completely calculated. So we can factor out from the from the radical the mc squared. And we get gamma factor squared minus one times mc squared. Is equal to one point seven seven nine squared minus one times and zero point five five one one and when we make that multiplication we get zero point seven five two two mega electron volts which is equal to 4.01 times 10 to the minus 22 kilograms per kilograms meters per second. Lastly, we want to get the, the angle between the shock wave and the electron's direction of motion. For this, we use this relation sign of theta equals u over v, oh I'm sorry, v over u, being v the speed of the wave, that's the speed of light in a medium, and u being the speed of the, of the electron. So we get that sine of theta equals 0 0.909, and theta equals 65.9. Four angles, degrees.